Hey guys, and welcome to another painting class. I'm your teacher, Corey J, and I'm an acrylic painter. In today's class, we are going to be doing this awesome eye painting here. And we're also going to be doing a bunch of swatches about learning how to mix skin tones. So here you can see I have a bunch of different skin tones. Um, and these are all mixed from the primary color. So we're going to do a mixing exercise followed by this eye exercise. And that's going to be our class today. Now a couple things about this piece here. You can see that I did this piece on a canvas. So it actually has a wire that I put on the back and it's on a stretch canvas here. Um, but if you don't have a canvas to work on today, you can just use canvas paper as well. Now I cut mine, uh, sorry, this is a square, uh, but if your canvas paper is a rectangle, you can either cut it to a square or you can just work from the rectangle itself. The eye shape is actually more of a rectangular shape uh, that would fit in that rectangular canvas. So you can just keep the canvas being a little bit longer than mine today and it'll work just great. Hey guys. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to teach you how to mix light skin tones, medium skin tones, and some deep skin tones, all using just primary colors. So the only colors we're going to use to mix today are red, blue, yellow, and then also white and black. You don't need to stress about buying all the different colors when you go to the store. As long as you have your primary colors, you can mix pretty much any color in the rainbow. So yeah, we're going to start off by mixing some red and some white together. I'm going to start with a bunch of white here. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of red and mix those together. And in terms of how I mix, I just swirl my brush back and forth. Sometimes I make little figure eights and I try and scoop up all the paint that's come to the ends and just keep mixing until it gets nice and smooth. And then I also rotate my brush just a little bit um, while I'm mixing. But yeah, our first tone is going to be this pinkish color. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a swatch of that here. And a lot of skin tones have a pinkish undertone. So it's nice to have a, a good pink in your painting arsenal. Next, I'm going to grab some yellow and blend it in with the red and white um, that I just mixed. And that's really all I'm going to do for our next swatch. It's just going to be the yellow, the white and the red mixed together. And then continuing on, uh, I'm just going to keep adding a little bit of white here um, as well as a little bit more yellow and a bit more white and a bit more yellow until I get a bit of a warmer tone. So this is going to be more of a yellowish undertone um, to the skin. And these three swatches, uh, the first three, you can use them all together when you're painting. So here's my third swatch here. And as you can see, just by adding a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow, you get quite a big difference. And then for this last swatch here, I'm just going to add in a bunch more white. So it's just going to be uh, the first three swatches plus a bit more white. And that'll be my last swatch there for those lighter tones. Now, as you can see, this is a nice uh, array of undertones for um, a lighter skin tone. You have a pinkish tone, a yellow tone, and um, more of a neutral tone. Okay, so moving right along to our mid-tones, I'm going to start out by mixing two secondary colors, uh, an orange and a green. They are called secondary colors because they each are mixed by combining two primary colors. So I'm going to start out my first one here by mixing red and yellow, and we got this nice orange color here. Then I'm going to clean my brush off super quick. And my next color that I'm going to mix is going to be green. And then I'm going to mix these two together um, and add a bit more yellow and a bit more red until I get a nice warm tone. This is more of a mid-tone uh, skin tone. And yeah, as you can see, it's really interesting that 
uh, skin tones are made up of basically all of the colors of the rainbow. So I'm just gonna scoop up my yellow, sorry, my orange here, and then I'm gonna add a bit more of the green. And I'm just gonna kinda go back and forth between them. I'm also gonna add in a bit more yellow as well as a bit more orange until I get kind of a nice warmer tone. And I'm also gonna add in a bit more red here because it's kind of not turning out the way I wanted. There we go. A little more back on track and then a bit more yellow into that. And as you can see, I've already made up this color out of green and orange and red. Um, and it's a nice warm mid-tone skin tone. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a swatch here. And you can see it's quite a bit warmer than my first colors and also more of a mid-tone. Now to that, all I'm gonna do is add in a bit of white. Uh, and you're gonna see that even just adding a bit of white changes the color quite a bit. And it's gonna make it a little bit more of a lighter tone um, a bit more creamy and yeah just gonna do that white for this next swatch and then I will go ahead and do a swatch of this and you can see just by adding white it really really changes the color and then again here I'm just gonna add white again and mix it into the tone. So it really goes to show you how much just adding white can change the color. And this has kind of more like a cinnamon color. So I'm gonna take that and do another swatch. And then for my last one, I'm gonna just keep on adding white and show you how that really, really brings up and changes the color. So from orange, and green and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. We've gotten all these different tones, middle tones. And there's my last one right there. Yeah, it's really interesting that you really only need primary colors to mix such a different range of colors. You can see my first lighter skin tones and then some of my mid tones here that are a bit warmer. And yeah, just mix from primary. So next we're gonna move on to some deeper tones and we're gonna start off by mixing some blue and some yellow to make green. And then a bit more of both until I get the right mix here. And it's really interesting that this color starts off as this really powerful green color and then it's gonna totally transform. Yeah, so the next thing I'm gonna to add to this is red. So red and green make a really beautiful brown color and that's kind of what I'm after here. So just add a bit more of each until I get the right amount um, for my first brown. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do swatch nine. Now you see I added quite a bit more red to this because it wasn't quite as warm and deep as I wanted, but now I feel like it's getting real nice and close there. So I'm gonna do a swatch of this color, this beautiful brown color. And then you can already see how you got your light tones, your mid tones, and now I'm working on the dark tones. So now I'm gonna add some blue and some red to this color and this is going to make more of a purplish brown uh, so more of like a deeper plummy brown i just love this color i think it's so beautiful and when painting deeper skin tones it's such a nice brown to have that bluey reddy purpley kind of tone really really beautiful so then I'm just gonna take a bit of this and we'll do a swatch of this beside my last swatch. And then I'm just gonna grab some white and show how that really brings out the colors in that brown and brings them up a bit. So this next swatch is just going to be the addition of white only. 
just gonna twirl my brush a little to mix it, make sure the mix is even, and then we'll do one more swatch here. Now I'm gonna clean off my brush just to clean off the excess paint that's on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab some white and mix it back into the first brown we made and bring up that tone a bit um, to lighten it up a bit. So I'm gonna bring that tone in and make kind of a lighter brown color here. And you can see, like I said before, I like to roll the brush in my hands to make sure that it's even all the way around. And then I'm gonna put this swatch right beside the color that it started from. So the deeper brown here. Next, I'm gonna grab some blue and I'm just gonna mix it between all three of these browns here. And then I'm gonna add a bit more red and a bit more blue and mix up this tone here. And I'm also gonna add a bit of black to my palette at this point um, because I really wanna darken the colors a little bit and they'll only get so dark on their own without adding black. So now I'm gonna make uh, two more swatches and these, both of these next swatches are gonna be a deeper, uh, deeper tones, deeper browns than the ones before. This one's still a more plummy brown, more on the blue side. So I'm just gonna make a swatch of that here you can see that it's nice and dark compared to the rest. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of red to it. And my last swatch will be more of a warm tone, deep brown here. And we'll just grab that and do our last little swatch here. And yeah, those are all of my swatches. So as you can see, you have three different kind of families of skin tones, and they are all derived from just using the three primary colors and white and black, which I think is just really awesome. So you don't need to worry about having all the colors under the rainbow because you know that you can mix them. Okay, so now that we have talked about how to mix our colors from scratch, I want to get into the paints that I used for this tutorial and what you should do. So what I did for this tutorial is I used some pre-mixed paints, but I would encourage you to use the techniques that we just learned to mix your paints from just primaries if that's available to you. Um, it just helps to develop mixing skills, which are so important with painting, and it'll just help you with your color and noticing color and mixing and all that. So I would encourage you to do that, but I'm gonna show you what I used, and then you can try and mix those colors, or you can just go and get those colors. It's really up to you. So um, first to start white and black, titanium white and Mars black. And then these two here obviously are mixed colors, but you could definitely mix these two from scratch using primaries. Uh, so the first one here is a rose color. It's like a light pinky color. And then the next one here is, it's a, a, a lemon, yellow color with quite a bit of white mixed in to make it um, more like a soft yellow. So these two colors you could for sure go ahead and mix from scratch or you could pick them up pre-mixed like this. Now one thing that I did want to stress in this painting is that I'm using a, a lighter, fairer skin tone for the skin color in this piece. But if you wanna change that color uh, to something more that you identify with or something that you'd like to explore, go ahead and use different colors. Um, use whatever colors you want for your base skin tones. You just wanna have uh, two colors to mix um, that are in the same value family. And then you're also gonna wanna have one deeper color that you mix uh, the darker areas. So for this painting, I use this purple color. Um, again, you could mix this from scratch or you could just go ahead and buy it pre-mixed or you can pick a different color. So uh, if you're going to be using different colors for your skin tones, you just wanna have two in this kind of family range um, of value uh, and then a deeper color like this. And then uh, for the eye, 
or the iris of the painting or the eyeball area of the painting, I uh, use this blue color here. You could just use a blue primary color. Um, it's very similar. Or you could change it and make the eye color brown or make the eye color green or play with it however you'd like. So don't feel like you have to use the same colors as me in this piece, but more so just try and emulate where I'm putting the color, how I'm applying it, and the values that I'm using. So lighter colors where lighter colors go, darker colors where darker colors go, etc. And yeah, I really want everybody to make it their own and feel good about it. So let's get into it. Okay, now to start off your painting today, you're going to draw the reference image of the eye, which I have linked below in the description box. Uh, you're going to trace that onto your canvas. Now there's a couple different ways that you can get this drawing onto your canvas. You can either draw directly on the canvas or what you can do is you can use tracing paper. So I really like to use this tracing paper here because I can transfer different elements of the drawings uh, at different times. So for example, I can start with the eye and then later I can transfer the eyelashes which are going to be the top layer of the painting without having to paint around them as I go. So I really, really like to use transfer paper. And just for anybody who doesn't know, um, what you would do is you would take your canvas and you'd figure out where you want your transfer paper to be and then you would tape it down and underneath you would take this transfer paper here, sorry, I'm saying transfer paper, but really this is tracing paper and this is transfer paper. So you would take the transfer paper and take the charcoal side, there's two different sides here, and you would put the charcoal side onto your drawing, uh, onto your canvas, sorry, and then put your drawing on top, tape both down, and then you could do your drawing and it would transfer onto the canvas. So that's just one way I like to do it, but if you don't have tracing paper and you don't have transfer paper, just go ahead and draw your image right onto your canvas. To start, you wanna do your drawing of the eye onto your canvas. Don't worry about drawing any eyelashes or anything at this point because we'll put those as one of the last steps on top of the painting. So to start, I'm gonna start in the darkest corner of the left side of the eye. And I'm just gonna mix some black and some white and make that deeper gray color. And I'm using, it's not my smallest brush, but basically my second smallest brush um, to apply this. And you always wanna choose the right brush for the section that you are filling in. So for this case, uh, in this case, I'm using this medium size brush. Uh, and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create kind of a gradient. So while the paint is still wet, uh, I'm gonna go in and mix a bit of white into the gray color, uh, just a little bit to lighten it a bit. And then I'm gonna bring it up one tone. And I'm gonna do that one more time here. And this is gonna create kind of uh, a, an effect, an ombre effect, if you will, of the light. Uh, getting dark to light in the middle of the, the eye area there. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to create the gray color that's going to be on the other side of the eye here, on the other side of the white area of the eye. And it's important in this area, even though when you look at the painting, or sorry, when you look at the reference photo, you see that that area of the eye is quite close to white, um, it's important to judge how white a, a color is compared to the whitest whites of the image. And by that I mean the highlight in the eye is completely white. So that is going to be our pure white. When we put pure white on the canvas, it is going to be just in the areas of those highlights that it's 100% white. And if you look at the highlight of the eye versus the other white part of the eye, you can see that it's not quite as white. So what I do in this area is I mix it with some gray to kind of tone it back a little bit so that when I go in and add the highlights later that it stands out. And I also had added like a tiny, tiny bit of this light blue color here because I wanted it to have a little, little touch of blue to the gray. It is barely, barely noticeable, but... Um, it still helps to create a differentiation between gray, a flat, a flat gray by adding a little bit of a blue there. 
And then I'm just going in and filling in the rest of the eye area. Some areas I've added a bit more black to to make them a little bit darker, um, just around the edge where you can see in the reference photo the the white of the eye isn't as white, if you will. It gets a bit darker and just creating that kind of shadow effect there too. And for this, I had started off using my small brush, but it was creating too many brush stroke lines, which is what ha is happening when you're using the wrong size brush. So then I went back to using that medium size brush. And then here you can see that I'm doing um, the outside of the pupil area so the pupil is blue and then the whites of the eye are this gray color and where they meet you can see there's a bit of this bluish haze so that's what i just did created there and then next i'm going to go in and i'm going to paint in the deepest area of the eye so i'm just mixing some blue and some black together here and i'm trying to get a, a deeper blue tone for this because this is going to be the darkest area and you can see that area is all around the outside of the pupil and again just make sure that you're choosing the right brush uh, for what you're working on so you can see that i started with a fatter brush and then it just was too fat I couldn't quite get those like tiny detail uh, areas of the the darker shades, so I went and switched my brush. Um, if, like I said before, like if your brush is too small and you're filling up a bigger area, you'll notice that there'll be lots of brush strokes everywhere, and that can get really frustrating. If your brush is too large for the area that you're filling in, you'll have difficulty getting the thin lines and filling in small areas. So always choose the right brush. And, and you can always start with one brush and switch to another. Um, there's no problem there. So as you can see here, I kind of completed the perimeter of that dark blue color. And then I'm going in with a slightly larger brush and just thickening the lines uh, where that darkest blue of the pupil are. And I'm gonna go all the way around and thicken those lines. And also um, when you apply black to a blue tone, uh, it tends to be a bit translucent when you apply it. So I like to uh, apply a heavy coat of paint so that I ensure that it's not see-through um, and I don't have to do two layers, but you could also do two layers. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lighten this color a bit and then I'm gonna go in and start to build the details of the eye area. And I'm just making little quick strokes with a loaded paintbrush. I want the paint to be rather thick on the brush here, um, again, to help with the see-through factor of the paint, but also because I want to add a couple different colors here, I'm gonna do this process uh, with a couple different colors and keep kind of lightening as I go. And when I do that, I want them to mix together a bit. And if your paint is too thin, then they won't be able to mix. They'll just, it'll dry before you can mix them. So then I'm gonna go in and add a bit more light blue to the same color. And then I'm gonna go in and do the same kind of uh, line effect here and I'm just going to go and spiral it all the way around the pupil exactly how I see in the photo and I'm also going to be mixing the two layers a little bit as I go through um, and you can see that I'm pulling a bit of that darker color into the lighter color as I as I bring my brush across and that kind of gives the effect that they are blending together and they're not two separate lines so to speak and then I'm going to go in and lighten it a third time or fourth time, not sure which time we're on here, and just keep bringing in uh, the color to the middle of the black um, iris there. So I'm just bringing it across and you can see that this time when I added a bit of white to my paintbrush, I didn't allow the paint colors to mix completely. So the light blue and the white, and that's how I get that little effect of little bits of white coming through sometimes when I put my brush down. And I'm actually gonna grab even more white here and just do those little bit of that really light detail. Um, the, the whitest part or the lightest light blue part of the eyeball. And then I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna do that last kind of layer that's right before the black pupil. 
So it's again, it's another darker blue color here. And I'm going to go through and do a ring of that and just lay that in. And I want to work rather quickly doing this whole process here so that the colors will blend together a little bit um, and create kind of that more realistic effect. Um, whereas if I don't blend them at all and I just wait for each layer to dry as I do this, it's going to look more stark and unnatural. And then we finally reach the uh, middle part of the eye. Um, I think it's called the iris. And so I'm going to fill that in with black. And here I'm just using straight black. So my next order of business is to go in and create some highlights. So I'm going to create that whitest white part of the eye now. So I'm going to take uh, some pure white here and I'm just going to start to work in the details. Now the uh, painting underneath is still a little bit wet, which is good for this highlight that I'm doing right now because I want it to blend in a little bit and just by rubbing my brush underneath to pick up some of the color underneath, you can see that the two blend together really nicely. But when I move on to creating that pure white highlight um, next here, you'll see that a little bit of the blue is going to bleed in here and uh, that is not what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this area here now, but then I'm going to come back and I'm going to add in another layer of white over top of it once it dries because I want this highlight to be the whitest white. And you can see in the reference image there, it is the purest white is this area right here. And then here I'm just creating this like kind of curved effect to emulate the curvedness of the eyeball and also where the eyelashes are kind of taking away the highlight into that reflection here. So that's that little area there. And then I'll just finish up this highlight by pulling a little bit of the white down. And then next what I'm gonna do is, you can kind of see that the blue and the white um, merge together in this kind of area. So I'm just adding a little bit of that color that picked up on my brush from the blue to this area here. Whenever you have two objects beside each other, you can always take note of how they relate to each other. So the reflection from one to another or the color that is reflected onto a, a, another surface right beside it. That's kind of what I'm trying to create here. And then I'm going to go through and just create this crisp white line that you can see just on the bottom of the eye area in the photo here. It's a nice little highlight um, here and I'm using the thinnest brush that I have. And the easiest way to make a thin line is to add a little bit of water to your paint. Uh, it just helps the paint glide across the canvas a bit easier and this is one of the only times that I find myself um, adding water to the paint because when you do add water to a paint too it also is going to make it more transparent and I like the colors to be really vibrant uh, so I don't do it very often but definitely when I'm trying to make a thin line I might add a little bit. And then here you can see I'm just going in and highlighting some of the little iris eye area here and just popping it out to make it um, a little more noticeable, a little more standout-ish. Um, and yeah, that should probably be it for that. And then you can see that I've waited for this area to dry here. Now I'm going back over with a second white uh, coat of paint and I'm being really, really light with my brush so it doesn't pick up any of the milky blue underneath or milky white underneath. Um, so if there's ever any areas that don't turn out quite as opaque as you'd like them to, you can always just go back through and um, do another coat of paint just to make it more uh, opaque and more solid. Next I'm going to start on the eyelid area. So I'm just going to mix some of the pink paint um, together with a little bit of the purple, this deep purple that I have here. And sorry that the palette got kind of uh, cut off there, the mixing palette. So I'm gonna try and 
narrate which colors I'm using. But yeah, this is a, a deeper purple that I just mixed the, the light pink with and the deeper purple color just a little bit. And I'm gonna start to do this eye area. Now you see that I've skipped where uh, the eyelid is on top of the circular part of the eye. And that is because I wanna create a blue reflection of the color blue of the eye onto the eyelid just slightly. And I want it to all kind of mix in together. So next what I'm gonna do is pick up a little bit of blue onto the same color that I was just using and I'm gonna fill in that area. Now you wanna do this while the paint is still wet so that you can get a nice blend between the two colors. But yeah, it's nice to do um, the two separate sides and then blend them together in the center where that blue reflection would actually be on the eye. And then you can always just go back to your first color and deepen it. And then here I felt like the blue needed to be a little bit darker. So I just tested it out by putting it above um, that thin part of the eyelid. And then next you'll see that I'm just gonna grab a bit more pink and mix it all together. So if you're using enough paint all at once, you'll be able to blend the colors together on the canvas and mix them as you go. Um, if you lay down a thin layer of paint, it's way harder to achieve that blend. And then I'm gonna go through with some more of the pink mixed with the purple and start to do that little inside eye piece. Now, now that we're onto the skin here that I'm painting, everything that I do here is kind of going to be an underpainting for the most part. And I'm going to go over this um, area at, with a couple different colors. As you see, we're gonna keep building up and building up. So this first layer isn't quite as important in terms of being perfect because as we layer colors on top of it, you'll see that they all mix together. So you really wanna make note of your photograph or your photo reference that you're using and the light and the shadows of your image and where those fall. And then that's exactly what you wanna em emulate. So I like to pick a certain section of my painting at a time and work on it. Um, it can be overwhelming if you're thinking about working on the whole painting all at once or how you want it to look in the end. So just pick a section and then decide in that section what colors to use for that section and how the light's hitting that section, where are the lightest parts of the section, where are the darkest parts of the section, and then just move through your painting like that. And then at the end, you can go back and go over everything to kind of unify it together, which you'll see that we do here. So back to the piece here, I'm just going ahead and continuing this bottom lid area. And I'm just using the same pink and purple combination here. I might use a bit of a lighter pink, but uh, it's pretty similar, just the pink and the purple. And then I'm gonna go through and do that same type of blue reflection of the eye color uh, onto the lid here as well. But this time I just painted it right on top what I had already done. And again, with this type of thing, you just wanna make sure you're moving fairly fast um, just to ensure that the paint doesn't dry underneath. And then I'm gonna go through and just lighten up this area just a bit, because I think it was a bit dark before. And again, just make sure that you're always choosing the right brush. So you can see that I'm often changing which brush I'm using all the way through, and that totally works. Um, it'll get really frustrating for you if you're trying to fill in a smaller area and your brush is too fat. So you can also use the lighter color, like the pink by itself, as a highlight when it's not a totally white highlight, and that's what I did right here. And then next I'm gonna to start to work on the lighter areas of the paint, the eye area here. And by that, I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the pink mixed together with a little bit of white. And here you can see I'm just following the reference image here of where these lightest parts are hitting. Skin tones are a mix of a bunch of different colors. And that's why when you're doing a painting like this, it's okay to mix as you go. So as you can see, I'm just taking my base colors that I've pre-mixed or that I bought separately that are pre-mixed. And then I'm just mixing in little bits of one color and little bits of another color as I go along. And this is gonna help create that illusion 
um, of skin and it's going to make the painting look less flat. If you just use the single colors without mixing them, uh, the painting's just going to look super flat and unrealistic. So uh, it's totally okay to mix as you go and uh, you're never trying to create the exact same tone when you're doing skin tones because light reflects on skin differently and we all interpret color differently. So you just want to try and um, use the similar colors but add in a bit of light white here or add in a bit more pink there and just kind of create uh, a nice blend of colors. Even this line across the bottom part of the eye, you can see there's a bunch of different colors that I mixed in there um, in different ways. And just using light strokes helps really blend them together. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bit of the purple color and I've just um, added a little bit of the pink to it. And I'm gonna start to create some of the deepest shadow parts um, in the fold of the eye here. And if you were to use the purple straight without mixing kind of a lighter or milky color, as I like to say, into it, it's going to be quite translucent. So purples and reds and blues, just in their purest form, are quite transparent and you can see through them and they require quite a bit of coats of paint. So what I like to do is I like to add in a milky color or some white to them just to help with the opacity. Now this lends to my personal um, style of painting because I really like for colors to pop and be really intense. But if you didn't like that, you could obviously just do the opposite to, gre to create kind of that opposite effect of that. But I think it's good because you don't have to do many, many layers of paint um, this way. You just add in a bit of white to the color. Yes, it's gonna make the color look a little bit lighter. So you have to factor that in. Um, but it will also cover quite a bit uh, better. And um, yeah, you can also achieve a good effect with these colors um, to kind of battle the transparency by loading up your paintbrush when you're using them. So here I'm gonna move on to kind of blending um, the lid here. And you can see that I've mixed the purple and the pink um, kind of closer to the right side of the eye and now that I'm working on more of the left side if you look at the reference image you can see that the light um, the eye definitely gets lighter as you go across to the left so that's the kind of um, effect that I'm trying to emulate here with the paint and also you'll notice that I switched to a thicker brush again so I'm doing a larger area of the canvas so I need my brush to reflect that and then using the same color that I have here, I'm just gonna go through and reflect the lighter areas of the bottom part of the eye as well. Now a good tip for working section by section, like what we're doing here on this piece, is it really helps the layering process. So you're able to start on one area, then let it dry and move to another area. And then you can move back to that area when you wanna work on your second layer and you know that it's going to be dry um, because you've given it that time by working on another section. So I like to do section by section for a kind of eye study or some object study like we're doing here today. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to mix this uh, mid-tone purple color and I'm gonna use it to kind of blend between the two colors that I've already made and also extend out where those little folds are in the eye on the right-hand side. Um, it's a really good color to use between these two colors, so the darkest purple versus this lighter pink color here because it's gonna to help to create a kind of a blend effect between the two of them. And then I'm just gonna go in and soften that by adding some pink right on top of it again. Now in this next section, I'm gonna start by grabbing um, some pink and mixing it in with some purple. And I'm gonna create uh, that darkest kind of line here where the eyeball, the skin kind of flaps over the eyeball there. And then I'm going to grab some pink and I'm gonna blend between the two areas. So I'm gonna leave a bit of the darker purple there and then I'm gonna go back and grab some pink and lighten it up as we move upwards. And I'm gonna do this all while the paint is still wet. 
Um, for blending, you want to work with the colors as fast as possible as acrylic dries like within 30 seconds. And um, it's so much easier to blend thicker paint uh, when it's wet and right away. If you wait just a little bit and it starts to dry a little bit, but it's still a little bit tacky, what happens is when the dr brush drags across it, it's going to lift up layers of paint underneath that have partially dried and it creates this really ugly effect and it also creates a texture which you want to avoid um, on your painting if the rest of it is nice and flat, which this painting is. So it really depends what you're going for. If you're going for more of a textured painting, then that's great. Um, but in this case, I'm going for a non-textured painting and I kind of like all the colors to lay uh, the same amount of flatness. So now I've just mixed uh, another purpley color again. It's the purple and the pink that I'm mixing together here, but I've created a bit more purple in it, so it's creating this kind of fuchsia color. And I'm just gonna go and create some differentiation between the skin and the lid, um, or the waterline, so to speak, of the eye area here. And then I really like this color as a color that would be an in-between color for the top lid as well, but still a little bit deeper. So you can see that I'm gonna layer this on top of what we already had there. And you can see this is gonna create kind of that effect where once you start to layer the paint on top of other paint, it really changes the way that it looks and creates so much more form and dimension to those colors. So I really, really like how that kind of blended those two, the dark purple and then the lighter part of the lid together. And then next I'm just gonna clean off my brush here and you can see that I'm gonna start to pick up more of a lemony color. So I mix in a bit of the yellow tone here and I'm just going to do a bit of correction to where the highlight is um, and then I'm gonna bring it down a bit. So. Whenever I'm painting something, my last layer on top is going to be the whitest of white. So I like to create layers that are lighter layers, but not quite white yet. And that's what I'm doing here by mixing this lighter lemon tone into the pink tone. Now you can see that um, red and yellow mixed together will create orange. So you can see the colors turning a little bit orange here, but I'm okay with that because I feel like that is still, um, still makes sense in terms of skin tone to have orangey tones in it as well. So it's perfectly fine. Now I'm gonna take a bigger brush here um, and I'm gonna go through and I'm going to start to work on more of uh, the skin tone area. So I wanna use a thicker brush because I'm going to be doing uh, the rest of this flat skin tone here. I'm gonna start with the deep, darker areas. So I just mixed a bit of the pink and a bit of the purple and then also a little bit of black to kind of create a darker tone here. And I'm just gonna go through on top of the lid and bring the brush across. Now, I really love these one inch flat brushes because you can really get a good kind of linear uh, line to it, but then also by squishing it down with your hand, so to speak, you can get a lot of thicker coverage um, using this kind of brush. So this is one of my favorite brushes to use, especially for uh, larger areas, whether they're a little more detailed and larger or just flat areas of color, um, it works really nice. And then I'm gonna go through and lighten it up and create kind of like that gradient effect. Um, as you can see in the photo, the uh, colors are deepest where the folds of the skin meet each other and then as they kind of come out they get lighter um, and the light is obviously reflecting that so i'm going to grab some of the lighter pink color and then just really move it across the canvas um, and again here i've loaded up my brush quite a bit uh, if you don't use enough paint on your brush, what's gonna happen is the brush is going to start to skip across the page and you're gonna get kind of a 
dry brush effect. And I'm actually going to use that effect later on, um, on one of the layers that I do on the top uh, coat of the painting. However, for the underneath layer, I wanna make sure that everything is covered pretty well. Um, so yeah. And then as you can see here on my brush, you can see there's a little dark line in the paint there. And that actually worked out totally fine for me. Um, but that's what can happen if you don't mix your paint completely and you have different colors on your brush. However, I really like that for something like skin tone like this, because um, like I said, it's not a flat, skin tone's not a flat color. There's a bunch of different dimensions to it. So yeah, and then I'm just gonna go through and finish the off the rest of the background with that lighter pink color, just alternating it slightly as I go. So next you can see me mixing up a purple color here and I'm going to use these for some of the shadows that you can see, you'll be able to see me do. And you'll also notice that I switched my brush again. So back to a smaller brush here. And I'm just applying this again on this same inner eye area here. And you can see just to deepen it quite a bit. And um, you can see that uh, the more layers I do, the more that this eye starts to take shape and form. And actually in this swipe of the color, I'm gonna start to emulate a bit of the folds of the eye area. So kind of creating a bit more detail there. And then I'm gonna bring it down low and do the same kind of thing. So uh, I'm just gonna do a little bit there because you can see there's a dark area in the image there. And then go ahead and switch my brush again. Um, so now I'm gonna get a bit of a thicker brush and I'm just gonna soften this line that I just made by adding some lighter pink to the color. So the same color that I'm using, I just add a bit of lighter pink to it and that helps me taper the color off a bit. And then I'm just gonna add this color to a couple other areas of the canvas um, just to emulate some, some areas that I feel like it reflects. Next, I'm gonna go in with a thin brush again, and I'm going to crisp up some of these lines that are pretty soft here. So you'll notice in the photo, in the little eye fold area, those lines are pretty defined, and so I'm just gonna go in and redefine them um, now that I've painted the background. And so a smaller brush works great for that so I can pick up that detail. And then you'll see how I'm moving my brush back and forth and back and forth. And that's so that I can fill up the texture of the canvas with the paint. So if you just would, were to swipe the paint one way, you would notice um, that you would see little bits of the canvas shining through or little bits of the under layer shining through. So if you go back and forth, it fills in that area a little bit more. And now I'm using this lemony color. So there's still a bit of pink mixed in here, but it's closer to the pure lemon color. And I'm just gonna go in and do some of these highlights. And right now you can see I'm doing a bit of a dry brush technique where I don't have that much paint on my, uh, on my brush and I'm just kind of lightly dragging it over the highlighted areas of the painting. And I like to do this kind of dry brush technique on the more final layers of my work um, because underneath, like I said before, I want the paint to be solid. Whereas if you do the dry brush painting on top, you can see little specks of the other color underneath and it helps to blend the layer that you're doing and the layer underneath. So that's kind of when I use that technique. And you'll see here, um, I'm painting, uh, I'm again deepening these lines uh, back into this eye fold area because I still don't feel like they're dark enough. And that's basically what create recreating shape and form with painting is, it's just, a lot of layers, uh, a lot of looking at the reference and trying to decide where are the light layers, where are the dark layers, where should I lay this color, is this color dark enough, and you just build it up as you go. And yeah, uh, when you have a, a color on your brush too, it's nice to be able to use it in a couple different areas and that's what I'm doing here. So I notice that, you know, there's a couple, a little area here that needs to be a bit darker. So I'm doing that and I'm just deepening some, some areas to create some detail. And the, the layer, the bottom layer of this lid here, sorry, the top layer, but the bottom area of this lid, it's a bit darker in the reference photo. 
And yeah, now I'm gonna go back with a more fuchsia color, but still deeper and create that dimension in the inner part of the lid here. And then again, once I have this color, I'm constantly looking at the reference photo and thinking, okay, where else could I apply this color that it makes sense? And it just so happened that I felt like the top of the eyelid could have been a little bit darker. So I went back and I fixed that up too. So I'm just finishing up some smaller details here before I move on to the larger area or largest area of the skin. So here you can see right where the eyelid meets the eye, there's a little bit of a dark line that comes across here. So I'm just filling that in. And then I'm going to move on to creating my second layer of the skin tone that's gonna go around the perimeter of the piece. So. Uh, for this, I'm going to mix again more of the lemon color as well as the pink together and then I'm going to add in quite a bit of white and you'll see in the reference photo in this bottom right hand corner where I'm starting, it's where the light hits the eye um, pretty much the most, right? So I'm going to load up my brush and start there and then as the paint kind of starts to um, diminish off my brush, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of dry brushing technique on uh, other areas of the, uh, the skin here. I'm going to leave a little bit of the pink uh, peeking through, but you'll see that with this dry brush technique, it does show a bit of the under layers underneath, and then it starts to create way more dimension and way more form to your piece. So. I really love this technique when I'm doing uh, top layers because if I were to grab a whole bunch of paint and slop it on there, you would notice that the lines would be quite harsh. So uh, when I'm doing a second layer on top of a layer I've already painted, I want the lines to be softer. So you want to have way less paint on your brush. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go through and add these highlights uh, closer to the eye area here and um, yeah, it's really, it's coming together here. We only have a couple steps left here. So if you've made it this far, good for you. Okay, next I'm gonna deepen this inner eye area a little bit because I feel like it's still too light. And I'm just going to mix in my black and white and go back in and, and just really deepen that area with a tiny brush here. Just little strokes back and forth. Um, until I feel like even that I feel like has made a huge difference. You can really see um, the difference between how it was and how it is now. Then I'm going to make sure that the painting is completely dry before this next step. Uh, this next step is going to be me transferring the drawing of the eyelashes on. So this is why I didn't do them at the start of this lesson because I knew that I was going to want them to be one of the last things that I painted over top. So you can see I'm just placing the transfer paper charcoal side down underneath my tracing paper after I've lined it up properly and then you just want to tape it down and then I always use a different color to draw the drawing on top so that I can see where I've drawn and where I haven't. If I were to use the same pencil as I did underneath, I wouldn't know if I had done that line or not. And then once you do the whole drawing, you can just remove the tracing paper and the transfer paper, and you can see that it has transferred the image here. Now, if you have a fresh sheet of transfer paper, the lines will be darker. I'm using a, a sheet that I have reused many times so the lines are a bit more faint um, but that's one of the good things about transfer paper is you can reuse it a bunch of times and then it, as far as the eyelashes go i'm just going to start off using kind of this like muddy gray color that's quite light to make the faintest eyelashes that are at the far side of the right of the reference image and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to mix in more of a black or pure black color as you can see me doing here. And for this I'm using the smallest brush I have. And this is one of those times where I want to create more of a straight line with the paint. And so I'm going to make sure that there is quite a bit of water content in this. 
Anytime I'm doing a fine line of black on my work, I always mix quite a bit of water into the paint just to make it more fluid. Now you don't wanna to have too much water where the paint's like dropping onto your paint or running down your brush, but you do wanna mix in quite a bit of water so that as you're doing these light lines like I just did there, you can see that they just glide really nicely across the canvas. And then I'm gonna move on to the bottom lashes here. So again, making sure that my brush is quite wet, rolling it into the black color and then just doing kind of quick lines here. Um, another tip is to go quickly with your brush here, like I'm doing really quick little strokes here and then reloading your brush up with paint um, often. So I don't wanna try and do the whole pass with just one dip in that color uh, in the watered down black. I wanna make sure that I'm loading up my brush quite often so that the strokes come out nice and clean and I have enough paint on my brush. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is go through and add in some of the highlights on the actual piece. So there is this little dotted effect here um, in the middle of the eye that you can see clearly in the reference photo there. And I'm just gonna go through and add those highlights. Um, there's a bit of a highlight here by the teardrop area. And I'm just going in and kind of adding quick strokes to emulate that here. And then also um, you can see that there's quite a bit of the white highlights on um, the bottom of the eye. So here I'm just gonna reiterate that white thin line that I did earlier. Um, just make it a little bit more pronounced now and a little bit more white. Um, again, sticking to this thin brush here. And then I'm gonna go through and add in a little bit of highlights to the eyelashes to make them look a little bit more realistic. And again, in this case you want to use your white but you also want to make sure that you have added quite a bit of water to the paint here so that it will glide across your brush really nicely the last thing you want on your eyelashes is like a big glob of paint or for the paint to be skippy and not you know totally run across the canvas in a smooth way so just make sure you add a little bit of water to your paint anytime you're doing fine detail work and then lastly, I'm just gonna add some of these lightest little hairs here um, that are just white on the inside and then go through and do a bit more highlighting. So you can see that also on the right hand of the eye too, in the image, there is quite a bit of little sparkles of light hitting the skin there. So I wanna make sure that I go through and add those in. And I'm just doing kind of like a dot effect here when I'm doing that. I'm just gonna start at one side of the eye and work my way across. And you'll see that even um, on the side here, I'm even gonna lay the brush down and paint a little bit more messily um, or messy-like because you can tell that um, there's quite a bit of highlight area there, but it also doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so yeah, I really like doing this. This is my favorite part of doing paintings is adding in all the little highlights and intricacies. Um, into the painting at the end to really give it that extra sense of dimension and um, realness. And then I'm gonna go through and add some of those straight, um, sorry, those curved lines that have, give more of the eyelid detail across the top here. And yeah, I think it's really coming together here. There's only a few more things to do here. Basically, I'm just gonna finish up adding the highlights and then we are almost done. So lastly, I'm gonna go through and do the eyebrow. So for this, I just mixed kind of again, like a muddy uh, grayish tone. And uh, I also like to make sure that the paint brush has a bunch of different colors in it at the same time. So for example, the muddy color I mixed of the gray, I also made sure to add in some pink to that as the skin is kind of a pinkish tone here. So I made sure that when the brush picked up the paint, it picked up a couple different colors along with it. And that's how I kind of created dimension in the eyebrow here. And then lastly, I just wanted to go in and add a little bit of blue um, just to kind of unify the painting. So I added a little bit of the light blue to this, uh, this eyebrow area here. And then 
that was uh, pretty much it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. It was quite a bit detailed and lots of layers to it. Um, but I find it really satisfying to see how the layers all come together uh, at the end of the painting. And I think it turned out really, really nice. So yeah, thanks so much for sticking through it and congrats to making it to the end of the tutorial. Okay, so that's it for today's class. I hope you learned a lot. I know we did a lot of layering today, a lot of mixing and a lot of different techniques. And so I hope that you bring those into your practice. Thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next class. Bye.